Hello friends, welcome to Science Team. Today we are going to discuss the article published in November 1887 in the American Journal of Science. The name of article is On the Relative Motion of the Earth and the Luminiferous Ether by Albert A. Michelson and Edward W. Morley. The article is based on the famous Michelson's Morley experiment. So the article with starts with the line the discovery of the aberration of light was soon followed by an explanation according to the emission theory so first we will uh, we will know what is meant by aberration of light so let's see this so if you go to uh, just google and type abrasion of light so you will find a page uh, regarding abrasion in astronomy there are two kinds of abrasion there one is chromatic abrasion this is the abrasion of images uh, in a telescope or any astronomical or mi in microscopes so we are not concerned with that uh, we are dis uh, we are discussing about the aberration of light the astronomical aberration so on this wikipedia page uh, you will find uh, that astronomical aberration or stellar aberration or velocity aberration is a phenomena which produces an apparent motion of celestial objects about their true position uh, you can see in the diagram that uh, earth is moving with some velocity around the sun and because of this velocity it was said that the uh, it is said that the the position of a star uh, may change depending on the velocity of earth so this is uh, this is all about the aberration of light uh, that means when you are when you view any star distant star then the position the actual position of the star is shifted because of the velocity the angle at which you are viewing the star is actually shifted by some angle and this is called the aberration of light the apparent position of a star viewed from the earth depends on the earth's velocity the effect is typically much smaller than illustrated so there is a very big angle you can see but it is very uh, it can only be measured by precise experiments so uh, hope you will understand the meaning of aberration and you must uh, differentiate it with chromatic aberration so the shift in the position of stars was explained by the explanation according to the emission theory so now the question is what do we mean by this emission theory so let's know about this theory so if you come to the wikipedia page uh, this wikipedia page on emission theory will find that emission theory also called the emitter theory or ballistic theory of light was a competing theory for the special theory of relativity explaining the results of michelson morley experiment of 1887 so it was an alternative for explaining the michelson's morley experiment so emission theory obeys the principle of relativity the basic principle is that the well, speed of light is constant for all the observers by having no preferred frame for light transmission so uh, it uh, it matches with the special theory of relativity uh, on the point that uh, there is no preferred medium which we call ether so but say that light is emitted at a speed c relative to its source so so uh, each time light is emitted from its source its speed must be c instead of applying the invariance postulate so it, it does not uses the 
invariance postulate that the speed of light is constant for all observers rather it says that uh, with respect to the source the speed of light is always c so in some way the emitter theory combines electrodynamics and mechanics with a simple newtonian theory so although there are still proponents of this theory outside the scientific mainstream this theory is considered to be conclusively discredited by most scientists so it's not uh, a valid theory in our era uh, sometimes it is also referred as uh, corpuscular theory by newton who visualized that the light consists of some uh, particles uh, which move in a straight line so uh, it's same uh, kind of theory so now let's come to the paper the article the discovery of abrasion of light was soon followed by so uh, light, uh, abrasion of light was discovered that the position of stars shift because of the velocity of earth now it was uh, there were attempts to explain this abrasion uh, with the help of uh, the theory available at that time which was emission theory the effect was attributed to simple composition of the velocity of light with the velocity of earth in its orbit so earth is moving in its orbit and uh, there is uh, there is some relative velocity between the earth and light and that results into the aberration the difficulties in this apparently sufficient explanation were overlooked until after an explanation of the undulatory theory of light so here the the name undulatory theory of light is referred for the wave theory of light which was proposed later uh, uh, mainly after the experiments of young this new explanation was at first most the as simple as former so so the undulatory theory or the wave theory was now going to explain the aberration of light but again it failed to account for the fact proved by oh, let's zoom it so that it will be visible for you but it failed to account for the fact proved by experiment that the aberration was unchanged when observations were made with a telescope filled with water so there were uh, such kinds of experiment uh, done in past in which uh, in which uh, the telescope is filled with water sometimes the there is some uh, speed with which water enters into the telescopes and goes out so and uh, and the uh, speed of light uh, was calculated in such experiments for if the tangent of the angle of abrasion is the ratio of the velocity of the earth and the velocity of the light so the arrangement were made such that the uh, light entering and uh, and the measurements were made in which the angle uh, the tan tangent of the angle the the tan theta for the angle uh, was uh, equal to in that experiment equal to the velocity of the earth divided by the velocity of light and and since later velocity in water is 3/4 its velocity in vacuum you know that uh, whenever light goes changes medium the velocity is reduced in the denser medium so it's uh, approximately 3/4 the velocity of light in vacuum the abrasion observed with water telescope should be 4/3 of its true value so ab the abrasion which uh, uh, which was observed with water telescope had to be 4/3 of its true value so if you read the footnote you uh, it may be noticed that the most writers admit the sufficiency of the explanation
let it be bigger so that it will be visible it may be noticed that most writers admit the sufficiency of the explanation according to the emission theory of light while in fact the difficulty is even greater than according to the undulatory theory because for on the emission theory the velocity of light must be greater in water telescope so velocity of light the light uh, which is entering the telescope and the water inside telescope is also moving it is entering from one uh, in one hole and exiting and the water is going out of the telescope through another hole so uh, it's like uh, two pipes entering and exiting the water so water is moving inside the telescope so uh, you can say that if light enters the telescope uh, that is in the medium and the medium is moving with some speed then that speed is added with the speed of light so it's saying that for on the emission theory the velocity of light must be greater in the water telescope and therefore the angle of aberration should be less so if you analyze deeply uh, this experiment you can read about this experiment in some books hence in order to reduce to its true value we must make the absurd hy absurd hypothesis that the motion of water in telescope carries the ray of light in a positive direction so to reduce to its true value the water must be moving in a positive direction to reduce it to the true value so uh, in this way the theory was going and uh, there was a need to prove that uh, actually the ether exist that is water is uh, that is light is flowing in an absolute medium so uh, let's uh, go ahead on the undulatory theory according to the fresnel first the ether is support to be at rest so according to fresnel the ether should be at rest except in the interior of transparent media like glass water the ether is rest but inside uh, the transparent media the because there is some flow so ether is not at rest so it's saying that it is supposed to be re at rest except in the interior of transparent media in which secondly so the second point is that it is supposed to move with a velocity less than the velocity of medium so so it is sub it was supposed that to move with a velocity uh less than the velocity of the medium the ether would be moving in the in the interior of the transparent media with a velocity less than the velocity of the medium by a ratio of this n square minus 1 upon n square where n is the uh, index of refractive index so these two hypotheses give a complete and satisfactory explanation of aberration so people were trying to explain aberration with the hypothesis that ether exist and the motion of light through a moving media uh, the there is effect of the motion of medium on the speed of light and that can result in the effect of aberration these two hypotheses give a complete and satisfactory explanation of aberration so the two hypotheses the first is that the ether is supposed to be at rest except in the interior of transparent media the first is that it is at rest and in in a transparent medium it should be moving with a velocity uh, lesser by this uh, uh, n square minus 1 upon n square term so 
द सेकेंड हाइपोथिस इज नॉट विथ स्टैंडिंग इट सीमिंग इम्प्रोबेबिलिटी मस्ट बी कंसिडर्ड एज ए फुली प्रूव फर्स्ट बाई सेलिब्रेटेड एक्सपेरिमेंट ऑफ फिजॉग सो लेट्स जस्ट ओवर व्यू द एक्सपेरिमेंट ऑफ फिजॉग आई एम नॉट गोइंग इन डिटेल बट यू कैन रीड इट अबाउट इन एनी बुक you can read it in from the special relativity by resnick and halliday also on this wikipedia page the fizeau experiment carried out by by fizeau in 1851 to measure the relative speed of light in moving water so the experiment was done to see the effect of the motion of water on the speed of light is there any effect Uh, that moving media can uh, that the speed of light can be relative to a moving media or it's an absolute uh, with respect to ether so the these were the uh, experimental set of fizo now let's come back to the paper so and secondly um, by the ample confirmation of our own work so previously uh, there were some experiment conducted by the interferometer experiment uh, same kind of setup uh, by michelson so based on those works the experimental trial of the first hypothesis forms the subject of the present paper so this uh, this was the historical background and uh, and on, also based on their own experiment they were interested they try to conduct more experiments to verify the existence of ether so if the earth were a transparent body body which is not earth is not a transparent body but if earth is a transparent body it might perhaps be conceded in view of the experiment just cited that the intermolecular ether so ether was supposed to be some uh, substance uh, in those days so in the inter molecular ether was at rest in space so the ether which is present between the molecules uh, is uh, which consists the earth uh, is supposed to be at rest in space not with standing the not with standing the motion of the earth in its orbit so they are saying that earth is moving in the ether but the ether present inside the earth is not moving because of the inter uh, because they are intermolecular but we have no right to extend the conclusion from these experiment to opaque body but since the experiment done by fizeau or fesnel all those experiment were done uh, in the media which was transparent but for the case of earth it is opaque body and it was it is not uh, it will not it was not suggested that we can extend those uh, observation or the theory to an opaque body but there can hardly be question that the ether can and does pass through metals so people were th- trying to think uh, that ether is some kind of matter and it can pass through some kind of matter and cannot pass through some other kind of matter so there was doubt that ether can and does there can hardly be question that the ether can and does pass through metals so it was believed that ether can pass through metals Uh, lorin cited the illustration of a but for the case of metals uh, there there is no doubt that ether can pass through them or not uh, so lorin cited the illustration of a metallic metallic barometer tube when the tube is inclined the ether in the space above the mercury is certainly forced out for it in the for it is 
incompressible but again we have no right to assume that it makes its escape with perfect freedom and if there be any resistance however slight we certainly could not assume an opaque body such as the whole earth to offer free passage through its entire mass so the main uh, concept uh, lying in these this paragraph is that people were trying to think that uh, if ether is there uh, which most of the people of that time were of sure that ether exist so if it exist it can if whether it can pass through some uh, solid medium or not so there were many kind of experiment uh, conducted to verify these things so uh, we certainly could not assume an opaque body such as the whole earth to offer passes so uh, the ether cannot freely pass through the whole of the earth the entire mass of the earth but as lorenz aptly remarks so uh, it's not written in english so it will be not possible for me to explain these lines but uh, these all things are historical so you can uh, just get a test for it uh, because our main concern will be the discussion of michelson's model experiment and these are just the background uh, for the paper so uh, we are moving forward from uh, this era in april 1881 a method was proposed and carried out for testing the question experimentally so there were many questions that whether ether exist or whether ether can pass through uh, an opaque medium freely or uh, with a lower velocity or ether can move with a lesser velocity ether ether can move with some velocity in transparent media so these questions had to be verified experimentally uh, and in some experiment uh, people were getting uh, some results with some errors so there was not a complete explanation for the theory so in deducing the formula for the quantity to be measured here quantity is referred for ether to be measured the effect of the motion of the earth through the ether on the path of the ray at right angles to this motion was overlooked so in this paragraph which lorenz cited uh, that people were trying to trying to measure the relative speed of light with the speed of the medium which were either parallel or anti parallel that is the, uh, the the passage or the motion of the light ray uh, is parallel with the flow of the media or anti parallel but no one till that time uh, were interested in in understanding what are the effects uh, if uh, if uh, a light beam is projected perpendicular to the motion of earth that is if you consider the earth to be re at rest then ether must, must be moving in opposite direction it is got assumed that ether uh, is at rest everywhere it is the absolute frame of rest but if we consider that earth is the uh, earth is the frame of rest then ether must be moving in opposite direction to the motion of earth so what will happen if a beam of light or a ray of light is moving perpendicular to the velocity of earth and this thing was overlooked so let's come to the next page so the discussion of this oversight of the entire experiment formed the subject of a very searching analysis by h l lorenz who find that this effect can by no means be disregarded that is the motion of uh, the light ray perpendicular to the motion of earth 
uh, cannot be disregarded and he suggested uh, ways or experimental uh, ways to investigate this uh, this searching in consequence the quantity to be measured had in fact but one half the value suppose so so if you consider that even the half value of the quantity um, that is the velocity which was measured so in the consequence the quantity to be measured had in fact but one half the value support and as it was already barely beyond the limits of errors of experiment so if you consider half of the quantity to be measured then even it was uh, beyond the limits of errors of the experiment so we cannot uh, ignore the results that uh, were suggested by uh, lorenz in his experimental uh, experimental oversight so from the results of experiment might well be questioned since but some of the results of those experiments of that experiment can be questioned but we cannot deny whole of the theory that uh, lorenz proposed so uh, in this paper in this article the historical background is being provided before their uh, explanation of experiment so uh, it was decided to repeat the experiment with such modifications as would ensure a theoretical result much too large to be masked by experimental error so here the line which is telling that uh, however the main uh, sorry from the result of the might well be questioned so uh, the the way the experiment were being conducted had errors and uh, it can the main uh, theory of the results can be questioned but but here michelson and morley are saying that uh, it was decided to repeat the experiment with such modification so in the same experiment they were doing some modification as would ensure theoretical results which were going to give some results uh, much too large the result will be much large and the experimental errors will be very very less compared to those results and in that way we cannot deny the results of the experiment the theory of the method may be briefly stated as follow so let's see what the theory says let s say the fi- this is the figure 1 Uh, be a ray of light sa is a ray of light which is partly reflected this light ray comes on a glass so this is a glass slab parallel glass slab in which the two faces are parallel to each other so uh, if light ray comes it can uh, transmit through this glass or it can uh, get uh, reflected by this glass slab so the reflected is ab and partly transmitted part is ac being returned by their by the mirrors b and c so b and c are mirrors along ba and ca ba is partly transmitted along so now if this ray a go ray goes from a to b then returns back from b to a then it can again partly reflect and transmit we will be interested in uh, the part which is transmitted while returning from b to a and while reflecting and returning from c to a the ray can part- partly uh, transmit and also can uh, reflect so both the ray after uh, returning from the mirrors uh, the part of them can be uh, meet uh, go in this direction ad 
so if you now if this mirror if this slab of glass uh, you know that this whole experimental setup is on earth and earth is moving uh, in a space that is it is moving in ether so with respect to earth ether must be moving so uh, now this is the same diagram for the same apparatus or the setup uh, but with respect to the frame of ether so uh, with respect to ether the mirror must be it the earth suppose that earth is moving in the direction of from ac in direction parallel to ac so ether must be moving from c to a so with respect to ether the mirror would be would, would seem to be moving with some with the velocity equal to the velocity of the earth considering that ether to be at rest so this is the position of the uh, this glass slab when the ray of light strikes and this is the position when the ray returns so this is the same glass slab viewed at different moments of time and these two returning rays uh, are calibrated in such a way the apparatus is calibrated in such a way that the two rays uh, coincide the ray returning from ca and after reflection and the ray returning from b to a and after transmission these two rays uh, coincide and as they coincide there they can interfere considering the undulatory or the wave theory of light uh, the they can interfere and we can observe that interference pattern with the help of a telescope so now let's move on to oh, there is something hidden and says part is reflected along ad uh, which we already stated uh, if then the paths ab and ac are equal if these two paths the ab and ac are situated the two mirrors are equidistant from this point uh, suppose now uh, if then the paths ab and ac are equal the two rays interfere along ad so there will be very slight uh, change of uh, path length uh, and if we remove that path length uh, path difference between the two light rays you will observe some interference pattern uh, some suppose now the ether being at rest now it is a, an assumption that ether is at rest that the whole apparatus move in the direction now what I already stated to you is being said here and we have already discussed these things in our previous lecture also in which we derived the uh, theoretical equations governing the Michelson small experiment suppose now the ether being at rest so and the whole apparatus moves in the direction SC so the the whole apparatus is moving considering ether to be rest at rest so ether must be moving in direction uh, from C to S uh, with the velocity of the earth in its orbit the direction and distances traveled by the rays will be altered I think we are missing something oh, no this is page number 335 so we must be on 336 the rays will be altered thus the rays SA is reflected along AB in figure 2 uh, the angle BAB prime here the prime is written uh, in the subscript so you must be aware of this the angle BAB prime being equal to the abrasion alpha so let's come to the figure again this is the these are this is the angle b a 
b prime so this is the angle and there is one another angle this is a b a prime so if you draw a perpendicular from point b on this line so the the angle made at this point will be alternate interior angles and that will be equal so this angle angle a b b a b a prime uh, must be double the angle b a b prime so let's now come to this page so the the angle b a b prime being equal to the abrasion alpha because of the motion in ether considering ether to be at rest although earth is moving but with respect to earth ether is moving and these two things are same uh, for the experiment so you know that the position of the glass slab is shifting with respect to ether and that is resulting with that creation of that angle b a b prime which is equal to the abrasion this was a uh, this this angle is responsible for abrasion so which is equal to alpha is returned along b a prime so a b a prime i already said you that it must be twice of that angle so it must be 2 alpha and goes to the focus of the telescope and that uh, that ray of light goes into the telescope whose direction is unaltered and th the direction of that is not changed the telescope is fixed we are not changing the direction of the telescope the transmitted rays goes along ac is return along ca prime so let's come to the diagram this ray after reflection from c to a it is coming to the telescope so the transmitted ray goes along as is returned along ca and is reflected at a prime and it is also reflected at a prime making ca prime e equal to 90 degree minus alpha so where is this angle so if you view this diagram this is 90 degrees but if you if you see the same uh, phenomenon with respect to ether the position of this glass slab uh, glass slab is shifting with respect to ether so this angle must be less than 90 degrees so you know that this angle is alpha this angle is alpha so uh, so if you do some geometry you will find that if you draw a line from this point perpendicular to this line s sc line so uh, the perp there will be a, a small angle between this line and that perpendicular drawn and this line and that angle must be equal to this alpha so that whole angle is 90 degree and this angle is alpha the angle which is made by a perpendicular at this point so this angle must be 90 minus alpha so the angle which is being referred here is that angle so that angle ca prime e ca prime e uh, you can just view what is e so this is e ca prime e this angle is 90 minus alpha and therefore is still coinciding with the first ray this angle is very very less so uh, but with respect to with respect to the telescope they are still perpendicular the diagram had been made with respect to the ether so you are finding that this angle is 90 minus alpha but they are still perpendicular with respect to 
the uh, apparatus and therefore is still coinciding with the first ray it may be remarked that so with respect to the frame of the interferometer there are still perpendicular it may be remarked that the rays ba and ca do not meet exactly in the same point a prime so with respect to ether they are they they started at this point a but they they split the ray is split into two parts at this point a with respect to ether and but they meet not at a they meet at a prime and after that they interfere with inside the telescope so these two points are not same with respect to ether but with respect to the interferometer these two points will coincide it may be remarked uh, so we have already discussed this the difference of um, it may be remarked that the rays ba and ca do not now meet exactly in the same point a prime though the difference of the second order so you know that they do not uh, coincide at the same point uh, they are they started at a but meet again at interfere at a prime so uh, this does not affect the validity of the reasoning why because the distance moved from a to a prime is much much less so uh, the angle alpha is much much less so uh, the errors if 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 uh, there is any error uh, coming due to this uh, we can avoid that because of the uh, difference between the uh, these two things will be of uh, second order so though the difference of the second order the result th there are some differences which are of second order so this does not affect the validity of the reasoning let it now be required to find the difference in the two paths a b a prime and a c a prime so we are going to calculate the difference of the paths this is the from a to b and b to a prime and from a to c and c to a prime so these we are going to calculate the difference of the path because uh, the lorentz theory was focused on the measurement of quantity uh, measurement of quantity Uh, perpendicular to the velocity so this is the velocity of earth and light is going perpendicular to the velocity so we are concerned with that so there are some notations which are being used in this derivation in this experiment the capital v is the velocity of light small v is the velocity of the earth orbit d is the distance ab or ac were considered to be equal uh, capital t is the the time light occupies to pass from a to c so capital t is the time and capital t time occupies to return from c to a prime so these are uh, the notations in fi uh, used in figure 2 so these things we have already discussed uh, in our previous lecture that how this time interval uh, will will be less more and less for the two trips in which the light goes along the medium the flow up a stream and down a stream and we sum the both the times and we get the total time traveled along the line parallel with the motion of ether and the other which is perpendicular and we calculate the difference of the two uh, so finally neglecting the terms of the fourth order the length of the other path is 
evidently uh, if you are not sure about these things you can refer to our previous lecture so it's evidently 2d uh, in the previous lecture uh, instead of 2d uh, we were having l1 bracket l1 plus l2 because here the two lengths are considered to be equal uh, or to the same degree of accuracy 2d 1 plus v square upon 2v so a square or a binomial expansion has been used the power half has multiplied with this thing because v up upon capital v is very very less so we can take binomial approximation here so the difference is therefore so the difference the 2d is so, should be the actual path uh, but due to the motion in ether this extra path is introduced which is 2d into v square upon uh, 2v square so this is the difference uh, of path if now the whole apparatus to be turned through 90 degree so the main concept is to turn the telescope uh, the whole interferometer by 90 degree so the conditions for the path a b and a c will be reversed so will be altered uh, the difference will be in opposite direction hence the displacement of the interference fringes would be 2d v square upon v square so uh, for these things you can refer the previous lecture so considering only the velocity of earth in its orbit we are considering only the velocity of orbit of earth not the rotation of earth or the motion of the whole of the solar system so this would be 2d into 10 to the power minus 8 if as was the case in the first experiment which is uh, i think this is 2 into 10 to the power 6 so let's just zoom it this is 2 into the distance d is 2 into 10 to the power uh, it's not exactly visible so you can refer it i think it is uh, 2 into 10 to the power 6 waves of yellow light so if as was the case in the first experiment d is equal to 2 into 10 to the power 6 waves of yellow light the displacement to be expected so all things you can refer from the last lecture because here the explanation is very very short so you need more elaboration uh, which is already discussed in the last lecture so from the theory now we come to the results because uh, we are mainly concerned with the results of the experiment here theory we have already discussed so and these things are not uh, not visible properly so you can refer these data from the last lecture so from the theory only without doing any experiment only from the theory the uh, the displacement in the pattern of fringes to be expect was expected to be 0 0.04 of the distance between the interference fringes you know that the uh, there is some path difference and as we uh, rotate the uh, so because of the path difference because of the path difference uh, because of the path difference uh, a interference pattern is generated which is visible inside the telescope now if we rotate the apparatus by 90 degrees the the, there must be a change in the uh, path difference between because now ether will be flowing parallel with ca not with in the direction of ba so so in so because of that the path difference must change and there must be some change in the uh, change in the pattern the interference pattern across the cross hairs of the telescope and with the theory only it was expected 
that there must be a shift in the interference pattern by 0 0.04 uh, multiplied with the distance between the interference fringes 0 0.04 of the distance between the interference fringes what is the uh, whatever be the distance between the interference fringes the shift in that uh, that pattern must be 0 0.04 of the distance between the interference fringe. So, in the first experiment, one of the principal, the while doing the experiment, we they have observed some difficulties. Uh, here, the difficulties has been mentioned. In the experiment, one of the principal difficulties encountered was that of revolving the apparatus. The apparatus was large, so revolving that uh, large apparatus without producing distortion. So, even you, if there is some slight uh, uh, vibration while moving the apparatus, the interference pattern can be disturbed. So, without producing any distortion, it was very difficult to rotate the apparatus. And another was its extreme sensitiveness to the vibration. There can be many kinds of vibration uh, which can affect the results uh, this this was so great that it was impossible to see the interference fringes except at brief intervals when working in the city so while you work in a city there are many kinds of vibration so it is very difficult to observe those shift uh, in the fringes while you rotate the apparatus because because of the interference from many kinds of vibration around you uh, the experiment had to be done around two o'clock in the morning so the experiment were done at such a time in at which uh, the, the disturbances and vibrations unnecessary vibrations could be possibly avoided finally as before remark the quantity to be observed namely a displacement of something less than a 20th of the distance between the interference fringe may have been too small to be detected when masked by experimental error so the observation was the displacement of something which is uh, 1 20th 1 20th of the distance between the interference so uh, from the theory it was said that the shift in the fringe must be uh, around 0 0.0 uh, 0 0.0 of 4 of the distance between the interference fringes but from the experiment they were observing that this was 120 1 by 20 of the distance between interference fringes so it was even very very less so if you even consider it to be 0 0.05 of the distance between the interference fringes so it will be 1 by 20 which is referred here then that the displacement of something which is even 1 by 20th of or 0 0.04 of the distance between the in, in the distance between interference fringes is very very already very very less and 1 by 20th part uh, that is 0 0.05 or 0 0.04 whatever uh, would be very very uh, small to be measured and the extent ex extent of experimental errors like vibrations from the from working or doing the experiment in a city like area uh, would be too much to mask the actual results so so modifications were required in the experiment to mask those uh, experimental errors so here in the page 337 the how they overcome those difficulties is mentioned the first named difficulties were entirely overcome by mounting the apparatus 
on a massive stone floating on mercury so now the uh, the second stage of the experiment came in which uh, they tried to avoid those errors to clearly to clearly measure the results of experiment and it was it was the experiment the results of experiment could never could never have been measured without minimizing those uh, those errors the first name difficulty were entirely overcome by mounting the apparatus on a massive stone floating on mercury so so the whole apparatus was mounted on a massive stone you this is the massive stone on which the whole apparatus these are the mirrors we will discuss it one by one so this is the uh, huge stone on which the whole apparatus was mounted and this and this uh, stone was allowed to float on mercury the first name difficulties were entirely overcome by mounting the apparatus on a massive stone floating on mercury you know that that the density of mercury is very high so other metals uh, uh, even the stones can float on mercury uh, and the second by increasing by increasing by repeated reflection the path of the light to which 10 times its former value so uh, the in the suggested experiment by lorenz uh, you see that there are only two mirrors and the path of the beam is actually from a to c and c to a and a to b and b to a if we increase this path then the path difference could be sufficiently measured with a higher accuracy because for a shorter path the error can be uh, error can suppress or interfere with the results so uh, this is visible in the diagram here so there were many mirrors mounted at the corners of the stone and these are the mirrors so you can see that the light enters through a lens and is reflected by this mirror then it goes back to this mirror then again reflected to this mirror and uh, one by one it is reflected back and forth between these mirrors and finally on this last e mirror it is reflected perpendicular and then uh, it returns back through its uh, path and uh, finally it is uh, it is reflected at this point to the telescope and similarly for th this uh, the ray of light which is uh, which is some of some part is transmitted and some part is reflected we will come to this but i'm just showing you that the here multiple reflections are happening because we have used here four mirrors 1 2 3 you can see these four mirrors so light is reflected back and forth between these mirrors so the path length of the beam is increased by using multiple mirrors so let's come back to the page we have left so and the second by increasing by repeated reflection the path of the light to about 10 times its former value so by using those mirrors the path length is increased by 10 times so the apparatus is represented in the perspective figure 3 so we have uh, the whole apparatus is here in the perspective figure uh, we will explain everything one by one along the paper so the stone a the stone is this a 
figure 5 is about 1.5 meter square and 0 0.3 meter thick so it's a 1.5 meter square the length is 1.5 meter and this is 0 0.3 meters of thickness it rests on an annular wooden float so annular wooden float is uh, it's a ring like uh, wooden structure on which this stone is has been mounted and that wooden uh, annular wooden this uh, it is referred on the next page so where we yeah it rests on an annular wooden float so which is float bb uh, 1.5 meter out outside diameter and 0 0.7 meters inside diameter so there is a uh, ring like wooden float bb named bb uh, which is whose outer diameter is 1.5 meters and inner diameter is 0 0.7 meters so and the thickness the thickness is 0 0.25 meter so you can see this here so this is the this is the stone and this uh, this bb you can see that this okay so this is a ring like you can see that this is a uh, annular or ring shape structure the inner the inner diameter is 0 0.7 from c to c this is uh, 0 0.7 meters and from this edge to this edge uh, it is 1.5 meters uh, diameter i think this is 1.5 meter outside diameter so uh, this ring shaped wooden it's like a wheel uh, which is on which this stone has been mounted and that wooden uh, float is inside a uh, inside a trough of metal uh, of iron so let's come to the same page so the float rests on mercury contained in the cast iron trough cc so this is the cast iron trough cc it's like a vessel uh, it's also uh, of annular shape and in in that mercury has been filled there is some mercury inside it and the wooden block is uh, inside that trough both are uh, of uh, the wooden block is uh, somewhat smaller so that it could there may be some uh, gap between them so that it could rotate inside the trough so now <laughs> the trough cc 1.5 centimeter thick the thickness of the metal iron metal used to make the trough is 1.5 centimeter and of such dimension as to leave a clearance of about 1 centimeter around the float so there is a gap of 1 centimeter so that the wooden uh, wooden float could easily rotate inside the trough uh, a pin d guided by the arms g fits into socket e attached to the float so let's view this so this is the uh, this is this uh, socket which fits into this uh, this wooden float and its main use is to align this uh, wooden float concentric with the trough so that there is some clearance uh, it doesn't touches the trough while uh, rotating the the interferometer so
so it the clear the clearance between the wooden trough and the uh, the the wooden float and the trough is always uh, b of 1 cm so this is the guide by pushing the handle you can uh, remove it 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 could be removed so that if you do not if they don't want it to rotate it then just take out the arm the pin d this is the pin d this is a d pin and there is a small hole through which it is fitted into this and the whole apparatus rotates inside this trough the trough is not rotating only the wooden uh, float is rotating and this is to make it concentric with the trough the socket e attached to the float there is a socket e you can see that this is the socket e the pin may be pushed into the socket or be withdrawn by a lever pivoted at f so we have already discussed these things this pin keeps the float concentric with the trough but doesn't bear any part of the weight so this is one thing you have to see that the socket or the pin doesn't bear any weight it just makes the whole apparatus the float concentric with the trough the annular iron trough rests on a bed of cement on a low brick pier built built in the form of a hollow octagon so you can see this is the hollow octagon on which uh, which is of very low height uh, height is not mentioned here but uh, it was in the shape of an octagon and you can see the here Uh, there are some markings one two three four uh, we will discuss about this uh, soon at each corner of the stone we have placed four mirrors so these are the four mirrors placed here the four mirrors there are four mirrors and here also four mirrors so at each corner here also four mirrors we have four mirrors at each corner of the stone we have placed four mirrors d d e figure 4 so let's see the figure 4 so this is the figure 4 and these are these are d d and d prime so there are four mirrors which are which have been referred as d these are e these are e primes these four are e primes and these are d primes so just take make a picture because in your mind as we have to shift from one page to another page okay. near the center of a stone was a plain parallel glass b so near the center of the stone there was a plain parallel glass b so this is the plain parallel glass b one of the two this is also visible in the figure 4 here this is the plain uh, glass b there is also another glass e but uh, first discuss about this glass b glass b these were so disposed that light from an argon burner a passing through a lens fell on b as to be in part reflected to d so from the diagram you can see that from here a the argon burner a light enters through this lens and focused on this uh, glass slab b and it is then uh, reflected by this mirror and then back and forth and there is another glass e the glass slab e 
its role uh, we, we are going to discuss a little later but just a just skip uh, th just take that there is no glass here just uh, consider about only about this so fail on fail on b so as to be in part reflected to d the two pencils followed the path the two pencil followed the path the, here the pencils word has been referred to uh, ray of light so or a beam of light the two pencils followed the path indicated in the figure b d e d b f and b d prime e prime d prime b f respectively and were observed by the telescope f both f and a revolve with the stone so let's see what has been said so the light entering at this point some of the the two pencils the two pencils are these this is the beam of light and after after passing this uh, glass slab and reflecting from this glass slab there are two beams the beam has been split into two parts and these has been referred as two pencils followed the path indicated in the figure so i have said already said that about this path that it is reflected back and forth from b to d then d to e then b d f this is the uh, back and forth path which has been re uh, referred here so for example let's for the reflected part so from b to d prime then d prime to e prime here then e prime to d prime then d prime so it's back and forth so the path has been we are naming the path so this is what and the, and finally you observe it in the telescope f so it ends with the f letter it in both ends with the for one of the this is this is for the reflect uh, for the transmitted and this is for the reflected respectively and were observed by the telescope f both f and a revolved with the stone so this telescope f and the source of light a is attached with the uh, with the revolving stone on which everything is mounted so when you rotate the the slab the apparatus the telescope and the then the source of light a bo both revolve with the apparatus the mirrors were of a speculum metal it's, it's a kind of alloy containing 2/3 of copper and 1/3 of tin it's a brittle alloy probably white in color so it was polished to make a mirror uh, and were observed by the telescope oh sorry the mirrors were of a speculum metal carefully worked to optically plane surface 5 cm in diameter so the mirrors were uh, circular in shape and uh, with diameter uh, 5 cm diameter and the glasses b and e so the b and e glasses were to uh, to split the beam of light the b light the b glass were plane parallel and of the same thickness the two glass slabs which have been placed around the center of the uh, stone on which everything is mounted were plane and parallel plane parallel glass slabs of the same thickness completely identical glass slabs having thickness 1.25 cm so these are the glass slabs b and e 
having 1.25 thickness centimeter their surfaces measure 5.0 by 7.5 centimeter so these are the dimensions of the glass slab used the second of these was placed in the path of the pencils to compensate for the passage so the second what is the use of this second glass slab here so we are not seeing here any kind of uh, reflection kind of thing here only transmission so what is the use of this second it is also used in michelson interferometer or uh, it's a kind of also kind of michelson interferometer um, but uh, especially designed to detect uh, ether so the purpose of this second glass slab is to compensate for the passage of the other of the other through the same thickness of glass so so why uh, this uh, glass slab has been uh, used and how this compensates the path length let's see this <coughs> 